Hello, it's Alden. Here's how I use Blender to do 3D set extensions for this hacker scene in my sci-fi film. First, I exported a frame of our two main shots and I brought it into FSpy. And FSpy is a free piece of software that you can use to line up all of your X, Y, and Z axes and your camera angle and bring that into Blender. FSpy has an add-on for Blender and when you bring that in, you can import your FSpy project. So you first open FSpy with your still and you can use X, Y, and Z axes and line them up in your shot. When you do that, you see this cursor. And if something's upside down, you can change one of your options to a negative value. And wherever that cursor lands, that's gonna be your origin point in Blender. So because I have two different shots, I'm gonna set the origin point to the same place um, for each of these angles. And that's right at this intersection of these pieces of the wall right there. So that when I import both of these, hopefully, they line up pretty closely. Import your FSpy project, and that's gonna bring in a camera with a background image, uh, which is the shot that you just lined up. And now all of your X, Y, and Z axes in Blender are gonna match the ones in your shot. Then you can start with a plane and basically just model the geometry of the room. For this specific set extension, I'm not gonna be projecting the shot onto it. It's just so that I have the reference of where everything is. I brought in both of the FSpy projects and they didn't actually line up super smoothly. So I, did, I kind of eyeballed a bunch of things. I knew that there was this desk here. It was perpendicular to the wall and I just kind of kept doing some trial and error to make these line up. I've seen tutorials where people use two cameras and their FSpy stuff worked out perfectly. I don't really know what I did wrong, but my workaround was just to eyeball it. I envisioned this kind of hacker space to feel like a giant server room. And during production, I had this LED strip. So I recorded it for a while and then I brought it into After Effects and duplicated it and offset it so that I would have this kind of section of three of these light strips all offset and flickering in slightly different ways. I rendered out PNG sequences of a couple different versions of this. And in Blender, I brought it in as images as planes, but I wanted to randomize if I duplicated this plane, uh, which video it was actually going to pull up so that, you know, all of these flickering lights of a server room aren't just the same pattern repeated again and again. I did that by having different inputs of light and connecting them to a mix RGB node. I used randomization and a color ramp to randomize which layer was on or off. I couldn't really tell what I was doing here. So first I decided to give everything a color so I can see how randomized everything was and what the distribution was between the various colors. So then I had this plane of the server lights and I just duplicated it a bunch of times to create these server walls. So here's an example of a kind of like sheet of those server lights in front of these hard drives. And this was kind of the first iteration of having the lights in the background and then something in front of it to kind of obscure the lights a little bit more. And a bunch of this stuff is gonna get replaced along the way, but from here it's actually like kind of fun because it's just a bunch of trial and error and setting different things up and seeing what looks cool. During production, I used the HDRI app to do a 3D scan of the room itself. And so I'm gonna import that and use it as an HDRI and line it up so that generally the, the lighting of the room uh, kind of matches what we had on set. I had these 3D TV assets already made. So to start, I just kind of uh, am putting them in into the scene. I know that I wanted to see a bunch of screens that this hacker had. And first I just use this as placeholder. Eventually uh, I bought a model on TurboSquid and replace it. But for now, I just knew that, you know, this is generally what I wanted. And I guess this would be sort of the blocking phase. What's in the shot? Where is it generally going to be? What is kind of there? And then from there, it's just a matter of tweaking and refining to get a look that I end up actually liking. We had a bunch of tech pieces on the actual desk on set, and I used Polycam to get 3D scans of all of that before we got rid of it after production. Uh, so I brought in all of those 3D models, basically just duplicated everything, uh, rotated it around so it looked a little different, uh, and just made this desk uh, as messy as it was during production. We used the same briefcase from another scene uh, and I wanted to cover it up with sort of a hologram emitter. And so I used a model of a 
record player, which I used in a bedroom set extension, and uh, got rid of the speakers and just adjusted it slightly and lined it up so that that's what's gonna take the place of this briefcase that the hacker is hitting. And just for now, I bring in a 3D model of an Android, give it a glowing holographic texture and uh, set it up there. So this is gonna match the lighting that we had on set uh, and the intention of having a magenta hologram floating there. In addition to the set extension, the reverse shot of her whole system was always intended to be done in Blender and 3D. So that's why I'm kind of focusing on this direction and building what the second half of the room looks like. For the rest of the room, I'm bringing in 3D models from uh, my assets that I have been using for this film. And I'm just kind of dragging and dropping some stuff to try it out. And I'm just sort of throwing things in the background and seeing what I'm liking, if it's inspiring other ideas, but I do really like the 3D scan of uh, the pipes and stuff. It just adds a lot more realism, and especially when doing full 3D renders, I find that if we have some pieces really tied to reality, whether it's an actual 3D scan of something, or if it's a 3D extrusion of an actual image texture, that that tends to make renders, for me anyway, look a lot more photorealistic than if everything was just modeled and textured with... Um, you know, textures I'm, I'm just building on my own. I didn't like the TVs that I had, so I ended up actually buying this model from TurboSquid. It did have the exact kind of look that I wanted, and I liked that they were TVs that were hanging, um, and I liked that they were a little bit smaller and that there were four of them. So I brought that in, reconnected a bunch of all the textures and stuff, and then went through and manually changed like all of the orange color to a company yellow that exists in the world of my film, and then also got rid of any logos and stuff like that that you saw on the TVs. So even though it is a model, I did, of course, adjust the look to match what I was going for. So now that everything is in place, uh, I can line it all up for the specific shots that I need. So these are the reverse shots. I use a background image set to behind so that I can see what the footage is gonna look like and I'm basically using all of this 3D model as stuff in the foreground. So I'm gonna cover up the walls I don't like with the new walls and also have um, you know the TV screens and the cartridges and things like that in the foreground. So I'm gonna move everything around so it looks good in each shot. The nice part about this is because it's locked off, I can render just a single frame and use that for my my uh, set extension. So I'm really happy with how this is turning out. So now it's a matter of doing it for the rest of the shots. So there is the coverage of our characters, Connor and Dasso. And so for each of those, I want some of the wall right behind them or right in front of them to be replaced as well. Now there's also TV screens behind everyone. So all of the actors for this entire scene had to be rotoscoped, which is a painstaking process. But uh, when all is said is done, I can add a bunch of vice messages and various things to the TV screens behind them. I can add new walls in front of them. And now for the holograms themselves. So this is a hologram of the company tower. And I use the same three 3D model that uh, I use for all of the exterior shots and just simplified it and brought it in and lined it up. And in addition to that, I kind of wanted this sort of grid that surrounds the tower itself. And so I just extruded a cube and got that uh, geometry and then added a wireframe. And then I use another cube and the Boolean modifier to kind of destroy the wireframe because the idea is that this hologram is showing that the code is removing like a geo lock on this company tower. And so I move that around, parent it to empties and move it around and then kind of animate the grid disappearing. And then I'm going to render out these passes and I can just use Eevee for that and export as a PNG sequence. So it goes super fast. And then I can use this texture and animate some more that grid disappearing and also add some, you know, kind of scan lines and glitchiness to the hologram itself too and just really make it look like it's emitting from this very DIY kind of contraption. And the hologram I think looks really, really good. This was maybe overkill and uh, probably not even really that noticeable, but because the hologram flickers, um, on set, we did have a magenta light shining on the actors, and we can see it on uh, this actress's skin here. So what I did was I just kind of masked out, and this is a very rough mask of everywhere that that magenta light is hitting her, and I animated 
a kind of light flicker to those areas so that the magenta light shining on her is also flickering like the flickering hologram. So again, it was a little subtle. Maybe I could have made it more extreme and it would be more noticeable, uh, but it is there and it's just one of those extra little elements of compositing that really ties in your VFX with your production footage. So using all of these techniques, a lot of Blender, a lot of compositing and After Effects, uh, I was able to do this full set extension for the scene. If there is anything specific that you wanna know more of, if you want a more in-depth tutorial or something like that, let me know in the comments below and I can get started on making one. Hopefully this was helpful to you and hopefully this inspires you to add some 3D set extensions and Blender environments to increase the production values of your independent productions. 